What's up? What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Real Estate Power Play. We come to you live every Tuesday and uh, right around this time. And we come and just bring uh, what we what we what we like to call. We just want to give back to the community in different ways that we can help other people build their real estate industry or real estate business um, in this industry from financing to growth concepts, business concepts, how to acquire properties to you name it. Um, guys, we have a fun show today. We have Marty Grisanti from Yo. Upstate New York. What's the word, bro? What up? What up? Glad to be here. Glad to be here. All right. And we the have man, the man, the legend, Marty. The, the, the legend. Um, and then we have uh, Ronnie Walker, for those who don't know, from uh, Michigan, the East Coast or West Coast. Sorry. What's the word, bro? I'm doing good. No, it's the East Coast. You're right. It's the East Coast. It's the Midwest, but it's the East Coast still. It's the it's East Coast. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. You, know, right. you kind of get a little, uh, little weird. What there. side of Michigan are you on? I guess would be the. I am on the west side of Michigan. So west side. I'm on the. I'm on the the good side of Michigan. Let's put the it that good way. Side. Nice. <laughs> the nice. hidden the gym. Pretty, the hidden the, gym. The, the west side till I die. West side till I die. <laughs> like, yeah, bro. All right, guys. So we have a lot of cool stuff. So if you are listening. Um, we're just going to put it in the chat if you have questions or comments or anything that that is um, for just growth or what we talk about today. Um, ask us questions. We'll be happy to answer. And we got the, this is a this is a highlight show. Normally, we don't have this many uh, heavy hitters on the show at one time. We're interviewing other heavy hitters, but uh, it's a highlight to have all three of us on here. So, um, Ronnie, we you came up with this topic. What is one of the key things why we came up with this topic today? Um, obviously there's a need, there's questions we're getting, um, people are asking us off the show and just in comments and just text messaging, um, all the time. So what's the word, what do you see happening? Yeah. So, um, my experience lately, um, with people is a experience of two things, right? Is, is one, a mix of excitement with fear and panic. And when I'm in interacting, I've, you know, I've started a Facebook group on, on my own page and I've been really involved in the local community. And even, even here, um, all over the nation, I've gotten questions. And a big part of the question is like, what are you doing? What should we see? What's your criteria? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you focused on? And, uh, and a lot of these questions uh, come out of this state of, I don't, I don't want to miss out. I'm, I'm scared. I'm confused. Um, and I had a guy call me, a wholesaler called me last week and he's like, man, it's, it's a crazy time. I've, I've gotten more properties. I've literally seen him push out like over 18 properties. And I think like two of them out of his 18 have sold. And, uh, I'm one of the few guys who's constantly looking at them and he's like, what are you seeing? And I kind of walk him through the difference in how I'm analyzing ARVs, how I'm analyzing repairs in my best case, worst case scenario when I'm looking at properties. He's like, man, you know, I've been doing really, really well for the last couple of years and now it's just tightening up. I'm having a lot of hard, harder conversations, even though I have more inventory. That's that's not the that's not the hard part anymore. And, um, and so we, we talked a little bit about where you should focus and how you should focus on sharpening your skills. And so that's where I came up with this topic was in an environment like this, those who are sharp in their knowledge and those who are sharp in sharpening their skills, specifically their ability to communicate and sales, um, I think are going to thrive where the others who have just mm -hmm lied on kind of being an order taker, like, oh, I have a property, let me push it out. Oh, I have a property, send it to so-and-so. Um, they're, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna get squeezed, right? They're, they're really gonna get squeezed and things are gonna get harder uh, for them. They're gonna get harder for us too. But if you don't have those skills in place and, and you're not saying sharp, uh, it's gonna be like, you know, it's gonna be like trying to cut an apple with a butter knife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just gonna be tough. So, um, that's why I came up with this topic. I'm really excited about it because I want to, I want to help individuals. And I think we all want to help individuals know where to focus instead of focusing on the ever building fear in the back of our mind. So that's kind of where this came from. 
That's good. That's good. So Marty, what are you seeing happening? And then, uh, we're, you know, knowledge power. Oh, we already have someone saying hundred percent agree. So what, uh, what do you see happening? What's the word? Yeah. And Ronnie, that was great. I think that's so true. I think it's, uh, it's time to really clean it up. You know, if, if you're maybe have some fat out there and what I mean by fat for us here is that, uh, we might have some expenditures that we could get rid of, you know, look at your balance sheet, you know, what's, What's something you signed up for that, you know, it's just not, you're not utilizing effectively, you know, for the people who maybe have, you know, a three prop stream accounts, drop it down to two, right? Drop it down to one, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that stuff that's out there. So it's just, it's just clean up your balance sheet. You know, you, it's, it's really just making sure that uh, you are lean and mean. You know, the other thing is start really asking the questions, you know, the knowledge of, is power part is start, you know, if you're a wholesaler, if you're someone who is, um, or a buyer, start talking to people and saying, Hey, so what are you looking for now? Hey, I know you were looking for X, Y, Z, you know, the last couple of months, things are obviously changing for you. So now what are you looking at? Start revisiting those conversations because they might've pivoted, you know, or they might've said, Hey, you know what? We are still buying, but we're just buying multifamily now, or, Hey, you know, we're just buying X, Y, Z. We're only taking on seller finance. Okay, great. So now, you know, and now you have that built up more of a, a, you know, you're not just throwing stuff out there. Right. So start to really ask some more, like Ronnie was saying, ask questions, ask better questions and then, and try to, and try to keep it cleaner. Yeah, guys, I think this is a, this is a great topic and also just understanding your market. I mean, I think every day, um, Pretty much every day now, I'm always getting a comment or I'm commenting to other people, not so much on social, but in other areas, text messages. There's one that was happening this morning where, you know, people are just trying to see what's going on for today. You know what's happening. The good thing is that there's always deals to be bought. If you're in real estate uh, investing, as far as looking at as either a side hustle or you're just picking up properties once a year, twice a year, don't get discouraged in those things. You know, it's like, uh, you could still acquire family wealth doing that. And if this is your full time gig and this is what you love doing and you're in it, then you should know that there are opportunities everywhere and you just have to edit that tool belt. Right. And just update it, upgrade it. And one of the things I realized, guys, and this is something that I might look, let's just go into this of leveling up your skill. Right. So. Where are areas that you're leveling up your skill or that maybe you notice going, man, this no longer takes me that much time. Mm -hmm. And maybe not so much like running a comp or looking like those are very valuable to know. But so if you don't know those, like just run comps all the time and you'll get really sharp at it. But what's a skill that now you look back and go, man, this thing has helped me so much. And I know we'll go into the sales aspect later on of like, maybe we need to level that up. But what is something that's more business real estate business that's really helped you grow and now you've honed it down and you're so grateful for it today ronnie go ahead yeah um so in in the light of that and i think what you're touching on is something that i've been revisiting is the idea of habits right like a lot of us think of in five years i want blank right like in five years i want to make a you know five million dollars in five years i'd love to drive Tesla in five years, I'd like to buy a 3000 square foot house. But what's I think more profitable for us to think about is saying, man, in five years, um, I want to be good at analyzing my cash financials, you know, and I want to be the person who operates uh, a team of 15 people. I want to be I want to be a leader who operates and and pushes them to the highest level and being able to focus on those habits and what habits need to be developed in this quarter. And in that quarter kind of bleeds in. So to to answer your question, Gabe, on what things am I very grateful for? I'm very grateful for kind of a basis on uh, developing some financial disciplines, um, specifically with my company. I have actually in my so I've got got six areas and if it gets to it we can share but six areas that i've revisited in creating my own plan uh this is this is where i want to focus in my business and in my personal life and the habits i want to create but one of the areas i'm revisiting is this idea of um looking at 
the details, looking at the financials, how long between when I spend money and I make money, what does that average cycle look like? Um, and really digging into those financials. And that's something, something a habit I developed 10 years ago, right? Of being able to, to budget and do that. And, and if I was being honest, I got a little bit loose because things were going really, really well. And now having developed that habit years ago, I'm, I'm leaning back on that habit and I'm picking it back up again, where it's like, oh, okay, I see that. Oh, I see that. Oh, I see that. How much, how much money is that, that uh, program actually making me? You know what? That's not making me any money. That needs to be cut. You know what? And, and being able to adjust. And so in this time, the ability to not be bleeding before you could bleed because we were all making, you know, all kinds of money and things were selling like crazy. Now we have to be a little bit tighter, right? You know, a, a rising market covers all airs, but I think, uh, but I think Warren Buffett says, "Don't let the the lowering tide catch you naked." You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing right now is making sure we're put together under the surface, not just rising with everybody else. And so I'm very thankful for for that habit specifically in cash management um, because it is it's interesting how things change and all of a sudden you're like, okay, where am I at? Right? Like, what are all my resources and you actually care? Um, and then being able to say, okay, how am I going to manage this going forward? That's good. That's good. Uh, Marty, what about you? Uh, if you remember the question, <laughs> Ronnie, Ron, you know, just go back and listen to what Ronnie says. Sometimes. Yeah, just do what Ronnie says. It, it, it really is. It really is, uh, filled with strategies. But, uh, for me, you know, what, what we're doubling down on is, is networking. It, it really is. I think, um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about when we were having, like before we were, we were going to jump on here was, you know, where am I learning? What am I learning? Right. That's, you know, online through YouTube, right. Podcasts. And we can get into those that I watch and listen to. And, but really the best place to go to is people because, it's really there where you're build. You could potentially build partnerships. You could build uh, deal flow. You could build, you know, cash uh, partners, right? So it's that's who I would talk to the most is other people right now. Um, it, it's it's not getting like I don't want people in this moment where there is some change to occur to get frightened or scared. Mm -hmm. you, you, that's the last thing you need to be doing. Right. When you wake up is have any sort of mindset of scarcity. You need to double down on abundance and helping people and getting people to where they need to be or want to be and reaching out to people you've never talked to before that maybe are a couple steps ahead. And yeah, you might get ghosted. So what? Keep going and doing it because you're going to have someone who does want to go out for coffee with you. And that's the guy that you want to be talking to or girl that you want to be meeting with. You know, one of the things that also with not just networking is start building your brand. It's a good time to do it. There's a lot of there's going to be a lot of people who it's just they can't stomach through this, you know, right. downturn. They're just not going to be able to do it. They're not going to keep posting. You know, the people that you thought were going to be here forever are not going to be here forever. And, you know, one of the things that you can do when you are building your brand is start thinking about not it's really not, you know, who you see liking your stuff but it's who is actually seeing you. It's not who you see. It's who's seeing you because those are the people that you're going to be rent. You're going to be able to live rent free in their head for a little while. Right. You know, perfect example. Uh, we're, we're throwing to get together an event, the go bigger event with uh, my buddy, Matt Drew. And of course, Matt, uh, Matt McGuckin here. And you know, there's people that are reaching out that I've never, I haven't talked to in 10, 15 years. And they're like, you're the real estate guy. I wouldn't know that. They've never liked anything I've done. They never reached out. They never said anything. But those are the types of connections that you can do. And it's very simple. Just start documenting what you're doing. Even if you haven't bought anything yet, mm. even if you haven't done any, anything with it. But if you're going through the motions and you're walking properties and you're talking, start documenting that process because you want those people at some point to go, hey, I got something or hey, I'm, 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 I've got this opportunity. I don't know who to talk to. I want to, I want to talk to you, Marty, because I like the, I like your style. So that's what I would say, Gabe. I like your style. That's what you're going like to say. Style, I, I like your style. Let's go. Let's go. Look, guys, this is good information for those who are listening for right now. 
Um, here, I'm going to put in here real quick. If you, if you have questions, let us know. Guys, what, I, I want to double back on what Marty said because it was freaking amazing. If you double down on talking to the people you already know and on building your brand, you will come across as someone that is valuable to talk to. I last I like week, it. last week, I reached out to a number of individuals. I just called. I called my private lenders. I called some other uh, people who have quite a bit of money in the bank, and I simply asked them. I was like, "Hey, um, I don't have anything I want to ask from you. I don't necessarily. I really just want to know your thoughts." on the market. I want to know what you're thinking. And um, guys, I had some of the best conversations of, hey, this, and then you know what I asked? So my normal question is like, hey, what do you need help with? And I asked that quite a bit, but I actually changed it this week. And uh, and I really like this. And I want, I want to give this to you guys as a tip. Um, and I actually heard this question uh, from something Patrick Bet David said. He actually wasn't teaching on it. He mentioned it on how he got Mark Cuban on his podcast before he was anyone, before he had, you know, 10,000 subs. Mark Cuban was a, a guest interview. And one of the things he asked Mark when they were first talking, when he was trying to get him was, what are you looking for right now? What are you looking, not how can I help, but like what challenges are you facing and what are you looking to do? And, and I changed that this week and I asked specifically one guy, I was like, what are you looking for? And bro, it opened up. He's like, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And this season, rather than saying, what do you know? I don't need any help. It's like, what are you looking for? And it's like, man, that's really cool. What are the challenges while you're going through that? And now you not only get to see their mindset, you get to see where they're pivoting and you get to figure out a way that you can plug in and you can say, you know what? Let me, let me spend three hours this week and let me help Marty with his commercial push. Let me help Gabe with X, Y, and Z. Let me let me help them. But you're you're reframing that by asking advice from someone who's ahead of you, taking it, saying what are you pivoting to, and what's your challenges. And uh, and guys, what Marty said there is so 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 powerful. Personal brand. Talk to the people you already know, because lots of people are pivoting. And some of them are pivoting in great directions and some of them aren't. And you yep. want to know what people are doing around you. So, yeah. Yeah, guys. Like right now, people are going to do different things. They're pivoting out, right? Some of them that I know that are just pivoting out of the business. Guys, this business hasn't even taken a, a, a huge hit, really. I mean, to, in my opinion, it's just that people get a little nervous. And, and in some areas, and you look, it, it takes time for real estate to really come to we all know that that you know it's it's probably the last leading indicator. Um, so by the time you hear it in the TV and the news and everything else, it's probably already happening uh, to some degree to the guys that are boots on the ground. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was asking great questions for this coming season, guys. I love that, right? So I actually was looking over my notes this morning of going, okay, what are the best questions to ask people that are around? Because I have a list. I just created a list this morning of like. I just wrote down pretty close to 15 people that I need to get a hold of before today's up. It's my personal challenge. I'm going to do it. I want to get the conversation. So I'm doing it through text message on here. I'm doing it through, you know, from anywhere. It's not just a phone call. And I want to know what's going on, but I want to know how I could JV and partner with other people. And I'm going to ask those questions of like, hey, what are you looking for? Another question I like to ask um, over this weekend um, on my, I already had this list set up to some degree, so I added more people today, but, uh, I had some, I had the list set up Saturday and, um, I was like, who can I connect with right now over a holiday weekend that just loves life, that just loves business that, that they're like, Gabe, I will answer any question. Like those are the people I want to be around, right? That's my circle. And so I asked a guy who's like, you know, way ahead of me as far as his business and he's doing really well. Sure enough, he responds back. Boom, we start doing text messages, maybe five text messages each. And then we have a, a Zoom call set up. I'm going to get him on the podcast. He's got it going. And it's good. It happened that fast, right? And I went and told my wife, I said, like, you know what? I just I just worked. 
Like I'm working right now. I'm making the best use of my time. You know, the question I like asking guys like that though, what gets you up in the morning? What do you, what project? Cause everybody's working on projects. Who's at that level. What project are you working on? That's making you the most excitement right now. Like, what are you just excited about? You woke up thinking about it today. And you know, because in three weeks, it's going to be a different project, right? It's going to be something else. So, so just think about that as you're building your real estate business, um, you have to talk with brokers, you have to talk with realtors, you have to talk with lenders, you have to talk with investors, wholesalers, other people find out, okay, what are you working on? That's really exciting. Um, I got right now, one of my top realtors just sent me another lead, told me that it's a probate deal. The person's coming back and like really right now in the chat, a uh, probate deal. He's coming back next week. This is what it's looking at. And it looks like we'll be at right about 50% of the market right now. Um, which is a pretty good deal, right? I mean, That's he awesome. just texted me right now and this is just out of conversations that we're having guys. So, who raise your hand. This is when, if I'm talking in front of a group of people who would like to buy a house at 50% and they're going, there's still those deals right now. And you're going, yes, but there, you got to build these relationships. So, um, the other Dang, thing that's I, so good. Sorry, go ahead. That was so good though. Yeah. <laughs> so it, for those who don't see Marty's raising his hand to buy more 50%. Deals. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Ronnie is too. So, all right. Two so, hands, two hands. so one of one of the coolest things that Ronnie mentioned, and then Marty highlighted, guys. If you didn't hear this, we are talking about knowledge equals power. Knowledge is helping you grow. What is one of the things that's helping you do this, guys? He mentioned something about habits, and and we we run aside to this. And I, I was um I was actually texting another person on my list today. Hey man, how's it going? We we're bouncing ideas also. And I go, hey, dude, uh, just an inner circle, me, you, maybe six, seven other people, high producers that just get crap done. No bullshit. And he's like, I'm only in if you can create a group that doesn't that doesn't bullshit. He's like, because there's so many. He's texting me back. I agree. One of the things he taught me was something like Ed Milet would say. And he's like, hey, listen, what are your standards for today? Right. Cause you don't get your goals, you get your standards, right? And so we get our goals and we set up our real estate goals and you want to do more. It's the second half of the year. You're not scared of the market. You're saying, Hey, this is an opportunity to go in and do more. So what are you setting up? Well, you have some goals to create some urgency, but really it's the standards that you stack on top of each other. Right. And that's why I was highlighting to Marty and to Ronnie is like, what are some of the standards that you have created in your business? that you could look back right now and go, man, I created this standard. It used to be hard to either get up and make those phone calls or it used to be hard. And now you could look back and go, I could see why people struggle through this. It was so hard. It took me a year to conquer this one, right? To really crush it. So Marty, what is the standard that you guys hold in your business? You guys are doing all types of deals, right? And you're, you're broad now, like, right? You've done deep for so long that now you could go wider and you're doing, doing events now, you're doing other stuff. What is some of the things that you're going, I totally see people need this. Yeah, no, it's great. That's great. It's, um, first of all, I just want to say really quickly that little, what's something that you're excited about or what's something that you're working on a project that you're excited about is a game changer right in itself. Cause everyone is constantly, so how you doing? It's, it's crap, right? It's so what, what, what's up? How you doing? It's crap. When you're talking to somebody who is like a, a higher level or someone who you look up to, don't say that. Say, what's a project that you're excited about? Or as like what Ronnie said, you know, what are you looking for? How can I help you? Well, let's get to this question. Let's get to this question, actually. This guy's been waiting a while. Um, All right. So and then, this I, is, and then uh, we can talk Jose about Rodriguez. Go ahead. Jose. Okay. So Jose says this, he goes, I've been wholesaling for a year now and done one deal, but haven't really shared with friends. What's the best way to let everyone know I'm wholesaling a uh, great show, by the way, I always learn uh, something here. All right. So this is a good one for, for Marty really. Cause you're letting people know you're talking about it. So you want to go over that again? Yeah. And then I want Ronnie to go, but you just, you just like for me, the, what I think is the best way to do it. And I don't think a lot of people are doing this is, do a video of yourself talking about it. You know, you can post something. It's not going to grab as much attention as if you take the time or you step outside your comfort zone 
and actually do a video. You know, there's a lot of people that I see that are wholesalers. They're not professional, just straight up. They have a crappy profile picture on Facebook. They are not taking it seriously with the way they're being presented. You're about to work with people on the biggest purchases or the biggest, uh, you know, transaction selling of their entire life. I know on YouTube, it looks like it's a paycheck quickly. I get it, but you'd better come with it. So I would say, if you really want it, do a video. I wouldn't post. Do a video of yourself saying who you are and say, hey, I'm an investor and this is what I'm looking for. I know that, you know, it maybe has been a while since you've seen me or have heard from me. So I thought I would do a video and I thought I would explain what I'm looking for because a lot of people have been asking. They've heard that I'm in real estate now and you know, I know people have been reaching out, texting me, hey, how can we help you? So I thought I would do a video for everyone to see. And I hope if you're my friend on here that you'll share this video. So hi, I'm Jose and I am a wholesaler. I'm a real estate investor. And here are the, kind of ty here are the types of properties I'm looking for. And if you ever come across something like that, I would love to pay you a referral fee. So if you don't mind, like this video and share it to everyone that you know that might be uh, appropriate. Thanks so much. That's it. Go ahead, Ronnie. What do you think? I, dude, I, I love that. I think, I think sharing the videos is very easy to just get out there and say it. And then whoever's listening and whoever's attracted to it's going to watch. If, um, so I'm, I, I love that. And I, I want, I'm doing that freaking all the time, right? Like I, I've started a Facebook group. I'm starting to do that more. If you want to have more personal, I'm just going to pivot a little bit to a different type of interaction is if you want to have more personal conversations with people, like that's the direction you want to go as well. Um, what I would recommend is learn how to self promote in a way that's not awkward and weird. And, and, a, and a great way of doing that is calling somebody up. Like if you're calling your family, if you're like, you know what, I'm going to call 70 people. And I've done this a number of times. I know Gabe has done this. Um, texting, calling is you reach out and you say, hey, man, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. What you got going on in your world? How's this happening? What are you working on? You start asking those type of questions, like just connecting. And what you're waiting for is you're waiting for the, like you're just connecting. You're not, hey, I'm doing this. I'm blah, blah, blah. And then when they say, hey, man, what have you been up to? Then you go, you know what? That actually reminds me. That's the phrase. Hey, you know what? That reminds me. You know, the other day I was doing blank and you share a story about what you, hey, man, the other day, actually, I was caught up in Kalamazoo and uh, I was I was going to look at one of the houses that I just bought and uh, I turned and then uh, I actually went over to one of my other projects and did that. So a lot of my focus today is really just managing these flips and these projects and then meeting with other individuals who want to put their money into real estate. Right. And, and when you share that, that's you telling them that's you. And so, man, a lot of my time has been spent here and this is what I'm running into. If you want to share a challenge or not, like this is what I'm running into. You know, I'm, I'm running into the fact that, you know, 18 properties have been sent to me in the last two weeks. And out of that 18 properties, four of them have been great opportunities, but I was only able to take one because I've allocated all of my capital. And, I, you know, one of the things I'm looking for is a little bit more capital to allocate on some of these great deals that I'm seeing because of the way I'm positioned. Well, now what have you just communicated? You've communicated, you're looking for capital, you have great deals and you have opportunity and you know what you're doing. Your situation might be a little bit different, but that's how you do that personal interaction, right? You talk, 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 you be interested in them. You be, And as soon as they turn to you, they say, well, what have you been doing? You know what? That actually reminds me, you know, the other day I was doing blah, 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 blah. And you share the story. And if you do that, that's how you can position yourself. Um, so they're like, wow, that's really interesting. And, and you just. Yeah, gets the conversation people. started. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're positioning it. And this is kind of what I've learned from you, Gabe, is you're doing it in a way where it's not like, let me get something right now. You're just positioning yourself and sharing what you're doing. And then you're just yeah. you're like, that's what I got going on. And then they're like, 
yo, that's so cool. What about, what? and then all of a sudden they're asking you questions. Well, right. now you got them hooked. Yeah, real estate is exciting, right? Exactly. I mean, it really, really, it's exciting. And one of the things that Marty mentioned that I wanted to highlight is whenever I, I first started doing this, I was so general. There were people that, that would say, Gabe, I still don't know what you do, right? No one ever tells me that anymore, right? The only people who tell me that are really the people who are maybe on the sidelines out of soccer field, like, you know, people who I don't bring up the business to all the time. I, I'm not that guy, you know, but, you know, people, so what exactly do you do? What, and that's the conversation I want, but I want it as soon as possible in the relationship for those who don't know. So the way I look at it is that there's a circle or you, you use a circle uh, analogy where you have an inner circle, a mid circle, outer circle, and then outer, outer range circle. And it's just a ripple effect, right? And so you got to keep all tiers of that level, just keep on going and you don't have to overthink it. But in the, in the back of my mind, I'm going, okay, I want to move them closer to me because I'm fired. Like you got to own it and go, I am the guy who's going to get a deal done. I'm the guy who you want to call. Right. Or I'm the lady that you want to call to, to, to flip your deal to talk today. I got a call on 130 acres. Right. This is a guy who's my roofer who going, dude, you're the one who I'm calling. This place is literally six hours away from me. All right. So this isn't another city for you or another state for you guys. All right. <laughs> right. This is like 20 cities away from you guys. And, and I'm going, wow, he's called me first. Yet he used to flip or he still does flip houses and does roofing for many of my investors. Yet he calls me first. Right. And so I want to be that guy. And how do I become that guy? I want to be the one who can, Hey, just checking in on you. How are you doing? I wasn't doing it intentionally, but just the side note, you know, who does a lot of good deals in, in areas that need investments. And we can take a guess roofers, right? <laughs> Roofers are always rehabbing houses. They're doing the, they, a lot of people don't know guys. And this is a quick tip that if you, if you know a roofer or you want to build relationships with people, maybe this, uh, this wholesaler here, you want to let people know, go to a roofer and say, listen, you ever pass up neighborhoods that you're just going, uh, they can't even afford my type of roof. And they'll go, yeah, yeah. Like, man, those are the type of neighborhoods I'm looking for. So if you ever run across anybody or you knock on a door, cause they're all roofers knock on doors, right? <laughs> So you knock on a door and they're going, look, I'm looking at selling pretty soon. Dude, I will pay you a huge fee just to bring that to me, right? And make it worth it for you. Be out there, you're pounding the pavement. I'll make it worth it for you. And then also those who don't know, roofers, whenever they're, if they're a good roofer, they'll add in like doing the soffits and doing the eaves and doing the other stuff because they have to touch those while they're redoing the roof anyways. And so you say, hey, are you doing this extra stuff also? Yeah. Well, how many people are you doing that extra stuff for? Because typically, if you're redoing a soffit or a eave, if you guys don't know, it's a you have the house. Uh, we're talking about single family, but uh, it's the stuff around the side of the house where the gutters go and stuff like that. That means it's probably an older home, right? It's probably in the '80s, seven or '80s and older, maybe '90s and older, where like the squirrels kept on getting into the house. Like this is real stuff, guys, that we're trying to give you knowledge on. Of like, these are cool little tips that you could be learning of knowledge what we talked about guys i've been doing this for 15 years so knowledge is power at this point because there's so many easy things i forget that i even know this stuff right yeah. like, heard, this is just easy stuff yeah what gabe just shared is like a power tip like stuff like that you guys need to go back listen take notes and then test it go out test it i tell you what if you go out and you test it and you say you talk to five roofers you figure out what it is and then send Gabe a direct message and say, hey, bro, I just called five roofers. This is what I ran into. I oh, bet you Gabe would be super- 100%. If you, if you were to tell me that you hustled hard enough to where you called five roofers or five landscapers or five inspectors or five anybody, and you said, I'm getting this problem, I will give you an answer of what to say. And I guarantee you in the next year, you will, or six months, you'll be getting deals. Now, wouldn't that be cool? And that's just one phone call for you. Now think about it. Let's say you called five, you got, you know, different responses, one replies in the next six months. And then you go and say, well, Gabe, it's been six months. And I'm going, yeah, but it's, it was passive, right? Like, did you have to market for it? All you had to do is just ask, right? Like what happens if you 
scale that. What do you mean scale that? Like, like, come on, I want to challenge you. Like you did that five times. Here's, I'm giving you the script of how to respond to someone, Marty, Marty, how many more would you call? If you could get one every six months, how many more roofing companies would you call? And Marty's answer would be all of them. <laughs> like, why not call all of them? <laughs> So anyways, that's just a quick tip, guys. I don't want to go over and beat the dead horse. So um, another thing that I have a question for you guys on. So we talked about just to rehash. We talked about some things that we want to layer up on, like the habits and stuff that we want to keep doing good on uh, things about just changing up the market. I love what everyone said is really building relationships differently, um, growing those relationships it's not saying, and this is one of the cool things that Marty said was like, dude, don't change your whole business. I mean, if you keep doing that, you'll change everything if you look at the market conditions, right? And you got some things that work. So stop doing that, right? Just build out. Let me ask you guys, are you looking about, because I know I am, are you looking at JVing? For those who don't know, that means joint venturing. Are you looking about going and approaching joint venturing different? In this next season, are you starting to look at stuff like in that way, Marty, to really expand your time or how are you looking at it? Yeah, it's that's a great question. And uh, it's through those nurturing of relationships that now the JV opportunities are really starting to open up for us. And for example, we just put a self-storage facility under, con well, LOI and it got accepted. And you know, I don't think two years ago, a year ago, even that the person we brought in would want to work with us until, you know, the events, you know, the different meetups, all those things. So that's, I, I really wouldn't, for, so for people who are newer, I wouldn't really worry about that because you're new. I mean, what are you going to bring to the table is what you should start to think about, right? Right. And you can do that through your actions. You can do that through your deal finding. You can do that through, you know, like I said, talking to people and asking, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, but I just don't have the time to do, you know, ABC. Okay. Well, if I can do ABC, would you work with me on X, Y, Z? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So that's probably how I would go about it right now. Um, again, I, I, we never go out searching for JV partnerships, I, I think it just happens. And you, and the best ones probably do happen naturally through the nurturing of the relationships. So I would just say, hey, they're going to come. But, you know, absolutely set it as a standard for your 2022 is like, hey, I do JV partnerships and because I'm, I'm really good at this. You know, I always, the big people, the biggest people I know, the biggest players I know right now that are doing a ton of stuff, commercial, whatever, their number one motto is I'd rather have a hundred percent of, you know, or I'm sorry, I would rather have a small percentage of a giant pie than a hundred percent of nothing. Right. So they're very much in the mindset of I'm not going to get potentially rich overnight over this project or this deal, but I know if we can build momentum with a couple of people and we're doing separate and we're doing some things and you, you know, that's, I think the best way to go about it, but you know, mine's a little different just because of where we are going, uh, my company with Matt and I, but you know, I, I guess it might be different for Ronnie. I, I, Ronnie, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Alex Hermosi says the best way to network um, or to build a network is to be the most valuable person in your group, <laughs> right? Like to offer the most value to the people around you. And um, when it comes to JVs, I think the natural approach is how it happens. It comes to people who believe that you're valuable. And so it's, it's not so much, yo, let's JV, let's JV, let's JV. It's, um, uh, adding value to people's lives that could be through a podcast like this that could be through calling everyone you know and having a conversation like we you know that marty talked about earlier that could be through hey i, I you know i'm really good at blank like what are you looking for and then oh you know what i can do that for you um for us jvs are becoming more and more a possibility because people are looking for ways to make money uh, I just pitched a guy 
um, was it Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday last week. And um, he, try, he tried wholesaling me a deal. Um, I told him, I, you know, I'm not interested in this one. And uh, but I did say, I was like, you know what I might be interested in? I don't know where your contract price is or what you're looking for. But if we split this thing, you know, 65, you know, 65, 35, um, you know, maybe maybe we could take it on and we could do the deal together. So if you wholesaling it to me, take on a little bit more of the risk, we'll take it um, and let's do it together. And we could split it off the end. Now, it ended up not being deep enough for us to do. But that's an opportunity of, hey, I'm not really willing to do this, but I am looking to do this. And so I am definitely looking at JVs. I believe that one plus one in today's economy equals five. I think the more that we connect, um, the more that we can work together. Because there's things I called, I, I, I called Marty, I don't know, was it two, two Sundays ago or something? Uh, we jumped on the phone and I shared with Marty some things that I'm not willing to do but some other things that I am willing to do. And I know some of the things I'm not willing to do, Marty's willing to do. And so I reached out to him and I was like, hey man, like this is where I'm at. I know this is where you're at. What if we work together on this? And you know, we're, we're still working out some of those kinks and what that's gonna look like. But that's how you start joint venturing is you figure out where is my headspace? What am I willing to do? And what is so-and-so willing to do? And can I add value or can I not? And the more that we can connect, you know, one, one opportunity might make you $40,000. Another opportunity might increase your net worth by $120,000. Um, it just depends. One relationship, you hear this all the time when you, when you listen, one relationship can make you 15 or it can make you 150 grand. Um, I got a buddy in Dallas. We've done, I think we're on our third deal together. We're going to have made over $100,000 for each other here pretty soon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From one JV relationship. And so, um, guys, it's super powerful. It's super powerful. So I think to Gabe, to your point, the more that we talk to one another, the more that we're open, the more that we're adding value, um, that's how we're going to add zeros to our net worth, in my opinion. Yeah, and I would also say real quick on that, some people have a real tough time with before there's even anything worrying about what their cut is if you go into situations like that you're gonna they're just the top level people world class people they're just not gonna mess around with you because that shouldn't be your focus really your focus should be on you know creating momentum when we were working on a project with some mobile home parks we weren't able to get momentum because we just didn't connect and we were all, you know, there was a worry about the splits and, and, and who was going to do what there wasn't even anything to really to take care of then. Yeah. There was no pie to split worry about it then. I mean, yes, have some, have some documentation in place, but not in the beginning guys, not in that first initial let, let some things occur. And then, start to, you know, make sure you're piecing it together, but that should not be your first initial thought when you're starting to JV with people. Can, can I add to that, Gabe? And I, I want to hear your thoughts. You start talking about the money when there's like what he said, when there's a pie, if they have a pie that they're holding and you're trying to get a piece of it, that's when you start talking about it. Or if you're holding a pie, right? If I had a multifamily deal under contract right now, or if I had a multifamily deal that I was negotiating at the moment, let's say I had a storage unit and I had a dude who's like this close to saying, telling me yes. And I come to Marty or Gabe and I say, Hey guys, I've got, I've got a storage unit and I'm trying to get them here. I need some help. How are we going to work this out? Like, what does that look like? That's when you bring up the money, but when you don't have anything and you're just kind of exploring there's no reason because there's nothing to there's there's nothing there. It's just it's just fake. Um, I love that, dude. I I am I am two thousand percent um, on board with that. That's amazing. Two thousand percent. What's the uh, APY on that? 
Um, let me see. I don't know. 200 <laughs> times, maybe. I don't know. All right, guys. So, um, just to let's we're, we're hitting the, the, the end of the hour here, guys, and we want to wrap up. These are all really cool things for those who are listening. We're talking about joint venturing, how to go about doing it, how to talk with people. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you something that I've realized in the last, uh, just what I've noticed is that the shorter term you think, like if you're thinking about today money, you don't really get the response that you want. I'm telling you this right now, that if your mindset is always just thinking about uh, today money, you'll probably, you'll, you'll go for every shiny object, right? And I know that it's a need. I know that that's kind of what everyone's getting involved with, especially for those who want, who have a side hustle of real estate and you want to overcome your W-2 and you want to eventually replace it. You're like, let's go, let's go today, today, today. And that is totally acceptable. And I think you need to do that. Um, but do know that while you're talking with some of these other people and someone who's leveled up and, and, and Ronnie said something of, of going, look, call everybody that, you know, and everyone that, you know, are doing it, but then you're, you got to do some cold calling. You got to be connecting with people who you don't know. All right. And that's kind of where the fun stuff is. Cause it's really gets to challenge you on saying, do you trust yourself to really go outside your own sphere of influence? Right. Or the people that are influencing you, do you trust yourself to level up and to ask those other questions? And then you go, well, I might blow my, I might blow my wad. I might, I might totally mess up the conversation that I had with Marty and Marty's such at a high level. He's doing other stuff. He's got podcasts. He's got properties all over the place. He's meeting cool people. I want to connect with Marty. And then the conversation just kind of go, comes off where you're a jerk. You know what? There's a redemption. Okay. Like you can come back and go, look, I think I came off as a jerk. I am sorry, but like, I was just, I'm excited right? Just transfer the energy over and go, look, I'm just really excited right now. Like, this is so cool. Um, I had a young person call me. She was young, wanted to know wholesaling and other stuff. But like, I want to answer this, but I wasn't expecting this phone call right now. Do you mind just send me all your information, text me after 2 PM. And then she's like, okay. And I'm like, make sure it's after 2 PM, text me back. And she did. And we had the conversation. Right. And it was a text conversation. It wasn't even a phone call, but I've just, I was able to help. Like you do this long enough guys that you're able to help out people through text format all the time. It's not that hard. So, um, one of the things I wanted to mention though, and, and I was highlighting it is that like, if you, if you're always thinking like short term today money, the conversation that the people that Marty's talking about at a different level, they want a smaller piece of a bigger pie all the time. Right. And so if you're just looking at going, well, I just need today money, they're going, oh, I don't really care about today money right now, right? I'm looking at you doing something so I can have a smaller piece of a bigger pie. So what does that look like? These are questions that you could be asking. Also, um, if I didn't mention it, we were talking about asking good questions. This morning during my, my, my morning routine, um, I was like, I want to hone down some of my notes that I've taken. So I went through all of my notes that's on my that's on my Apple phone. And I have a note on there saying great questions to ask. And there's probably 22 questions on there that I'm like, oh, let me look through these questions to ask people. And I'm just looking through and I'm like, you know what? If you run across anyone, you want to keep these notes in hand. I've learned this from a guy. He's like, some people come up to me and they don't even know what to ask. So they say, let me pick your brain. Right. And you're like, ah, oh, dude, you know, you're going to pick my brain. Like that sounds horrible. What about asking me a great question? And I'd be happy to answer it. So guys, these are quick tips. Knowledge is power. Whenever you're looking at stuff like this, we're not talking about vast knowledge. We're talking about being laser beam focused, growing your real estate investment business. Uh, we all want to help you grow. Marty, to, to cap things off, we'll go around Robin. What are some, what is something that you want to finish on? Just let people know. We got, I think less than six months left in the year. Look back at your goals. Make sure that those goals are now standards that you want to set for yourself. Ronnie? Bro, that was like one, two punch. Hand it off to me. Oh, crap. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, um, I think out of this, knowledge is power relationships are are what relationships um you can find some of the best knowledge from relationships you know relationships you don't know what is the one thing you are working on on your company 
that a wholesale can add value to? Um, I'm going to let Gabe answer that question. Someone just added, added this. So what is the one thing that you are working on your company and that a wholesaler can add value to? Well, oh, look, okay. I understand. Uh, wholesalers are, their goal is to acquire properties. They're, they should, they're the, 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 the movers in looking for deals, finding deals, needle in the haystack and it's haystack type stuff. Um, so one of the things that I am looking at is, I mean, you know, and we can all go through different stuff, but if you're asking a general question of like, what can a wholesaler add value to? Well, wholesaler's job is to be the person out there digging through the stuff, looking for great deals. So you should be always running comps on new properties, always looking for properties. That's your role is bringing value to someone else by looking for deals. Now, the cool part is it could be any type of deal. We're not just talking about single family. It could be like, I'm looking for more mobile home parks also. Right. So storage facilities, look for storage facilities. You can look for anything as a wholesaler. Uh, the higher up you go in wholesaling, as far as like uh, the value of the property, you got to remember that there's 30 days and 60 days and um, there's feasibility. There's longer periods. But if you want to go in and you want to go on a move quickly, wholesalers are a vital need to every investor's world. Um, so I would just bring value that in that way. Like, hey, man, I, I have ability to look for deals. Tell me what you want. And I'll, if you got the money, I'll back it up. So, um, guys, that's all for today. I, we don't want to go too long, too winded. We think we packed in a ton of information here. I just want to say thank you so much. If you like this, if you liked anything that's on here, Marty has his own thing. Marty, why don't you share a little bit about what you're doing um, so that way those who are on here in your area can connect with you. I think you're muted. Hold on. We have the Upstate New York Real Estate Investors Group on Facebook. It's a uh, 4,000 members strong of like-minded individuals who are looking to use real estate as their path to financial freedom, as well as we have a uh, for someone who's maybe got one or two rentals, wants to know how to scale. People who are looking that not sure how to find off-market deals. We have the Go Big Go Bigger event, July 30th. Uh, it, tickets are almost sold out, so they are some still available, but it's something to really get on. And, uh, and that's, and that's how you can reach out to us. You can, uh, you can pick my brain by buying a ticket to the event. <laughs> what else we got? Um, Ronnie, how are we getting a hold of you? Uh, for me, I've, uh, I'm also on Facebook. I got the West Michigan real estate investors, uh, group. So you can reach out to me that way. Um, I've also, I've also got a YouTube channel and that stuff, but I think really guys, like this channel, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube. We've got a real estate power play podcast and uh, come and reach out to us. One of the things I love, and I'll just tell you exactly what, what I love and, and I'll put it in your guys' ballpark is do take some actions on what you're learning and then come back and share it with me or share it with Gabe or share it with Marty and say, man, you said this on this podcast at this time and I did X, Y, Z, and here was the result. Thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. I'd love to connect with you here. Like that stuff is so valuable because here's the thing we want. We want to connect with the guys who are serious. We want to connect with those of you out there who are plugging away. And, uh, and if you take some of that small action, you share what you like, you share some of the takeaways, um, we can do that. But you can find us on iTunes, um, like this, if, if you got value from it, we'd love, we'd, we'd be honored if you would share it to, to your friends and family. Um, and, uh, we'll be back next week, uh, with another, with another topic. Game on guys. All right. Well, we'll see you guys later. Peace. And.